For a while, I had my head buried in online blogs trying to figure out what one of the buzziest terms in baseball, seam shifted weight, actually meant. But I have very little understanding of advanced physics, so unsurprisingly, all this information pretty much went over my head. And as I talked to those in and around baseball, it became pretty apparent to me that we've been focused on the public side on the aerodynamics of the pitch, how the airflow around the ball affects the resulting movement profile. When what we should kind of be focused on more so is the input, which is the seam orientation of the ball and how that affects the resulting movement profile of the pitch. And an MLB coach consolidated this idea to me and it's kind of stuck ever since. He said, we know really, really well what pitches get major league hitters out. And we know what seam orientations create the greatest opportunity for wacky stuff to happen. And that's kind of how I think we should be looking at all this. Instead of the aerodynamics, focus more so on the seam orientation of the pitch and how that affects well, the ball flight and the resulting movement profile of that pitch. So that wacky stuff I'm talking about is commonly referred to as seam shifted wake in the public space, but I'm gonna refer to it as seam effects in this video as I think that does a slightly better job of encompassing everything that could be happening to a ball during flight, some of which we're not maybe 100% certain uh, of at the moment. So let's think into Blake Trinan, the sweeping slider taking over baseball, and seam effects. Seam effects can generally be categorized as movement that occurs for reasons other than the Magnus effect. And instead of digging into what the Magnus effect is, I'm gonna give a little bit of an example. Imagine you're a right-handed pitcher and you're throwing a slider, and based on how you move as an athlete and based on the spin characteristics of that pitch, We'd expect it to end up somewhere here in the zone. But instead what's occurring is that ball is actually taking off a little bit more to the glove side, or perhaps it's even resisting the force of gravity a little bit and hanging up above where we kind of expect that pitch to end up. What could be occurring is a seam effect on the ball. And these are kind of desired, seam effects are good, due in part to some research via driveline baseball that points out that this unexpected movement is actually occurring, we believe, kind of late in the ball's flight. So that scouting idea, scouts being able to point out when they identify a slider as having late movement, is somewhat validated a bit by seam effects. And the only thing we have right now on the public side to identify when seam effects could have occurred during ball flight are spin direction charts via Baseball Savant. And those look something like this. You've probably seen them floating around on Twitter and other spaces. And what those are pointing out is that there could have been a change in how this ball was spinning during its actual flight. During the path of the ball flight, the ball could have changed the direction it is spinning. And what that kind of looks like is something like this. Again, we'll go back to our example. You're a right-handed pitcher and you're throwing a slider. And out of your hand, that ball's spinning something like this. So you see the direction of that spin is maybe tilted a little bit slightly downward. But by the time that arrives at the plate, based on the resulting movement of the pitch, we'd expect that ball to actually be spinning more laterally across the zone something like that, the direction of the spin is something like that. That change from here to here suggests that a seam effect could have occurred on the baseball. To see this in actual ball flight, let's take a quick look at one example. Here's a Marcus Stroman pitch from last season. It's a sinker. What you're looking for is that small black dot, the MLB logo on the ball. Look at how it's creating a larger circle for part of the ball's flight as it's coming out of his hand. And then as that pitch travels towards the plate, the circle kind of tightens up a little bit. That's a change in the spin direction of the ball during flight. We're going to talk about Blake Trinan in a bit, but here's an example of seam shifted wake on a slider. What you're looking for here is how the ball spins consistently, aka you see the same seams earlier in that ball flight. It's almost like a pattern is created out of his hand. And then as the ball kind of gets towards the end of its flight, that consistency kind of disappears and the ball maybe starts to blur a little bit. You, you kind of lose that pattern and, and see one that's maybe now a little bit more erratic of a pattern. That's also a change in spin direction occurring during ball flight. But the problem is there are instances of pitchers who have nominal pitch characteristics and spin characteristics that you wouldn't really expect to have crazy movement on their pitches who are able to achieve better than average or, or well more than expected movements on their pitches without much change in spin direction, suggesting that there could be some seam effects occurring on the ball, creating extra unexpected movement that aren't captured in our spin direction charts via Baseball Savant. An example of this is Spencer Patton, an overlooked reliever for the Rangers, who has underwhelming spin characteristics that would suggest he should get less than six inches of horizontal movement on his slider. 
And he also doesn't really have a huge spin direction difference, which we just talked about, which is kind of our only barometer, again, for the amount of seam effects that could be occurring on a given pitch. Yet Patton generates more than double that six inches we'd kind of expect to around 12 of horizontal movement on a slider. Shout out to Nathaniel Plotz on Twitter for this info. I think this suggests there's something else going on during ball flight, apart from simply the spin direction change that is allowing him to achieve this level of horizontal movement. And one guess as to the variable that might be at work in the case of Patton and others is what I stressed earlier, seam orientation, having even more of an effect than we might think on the flight of a ball. On the public side, we have very little evidence of seam orientation changes being associated with movement profile changes. So it's kind of a black box for us to understand how a very small seam orientation tweak could actually result in really large seam effects or really large differences in movement. But thankfully, I found one example on the public side that helps us kind of get behind the curtain, so to speak, a little bit. And it relates to Blake Trinan's slider. Trinan's slider is an example of a sweeping slider, or as we're starting to kind of hear them called in baseball circles now, a sweeper. Essentially, that just means it gets a ton of horizontal movement. It cr cuts a lot across the zone. And it's one of the most effective pitches a right-handed pitcher can throw against a right-handed hitter. But Trinan's slider, sweeper, is one of the most insane ones in baseball. He throws it 86 miles per hour and he gets 13 inches of horizontal movement. He's only one of four pitchers in baseball to get more than 13 inches of horizontal movement at that 86 mile per hour band. But the curious thing is that this change, this better slider for, for Trinan happened between 2020 and 2021. And he was throwing the pitch in 2020, something more so like this, where he's spinning the ball like that, maybe wrapping around it slightly, but it's coming out of his hand something like this, where the orientation of the ball is kind of like that. He's on the inside of the, of the horseshoe there. And in 2021, he opted for more of a two seam orientation on his slider, where he's going like this on the tracks, kind of like that. And you'll see it in a video I'm gonna show in a sec. It wraps like his hand like that. So these three things, the orientation change of the ball being on the tracks in this two seam orientation. I also believe maybe a slight direction to how he spins the ball, he wraps around it a little bit more and also potentially some grip differences in the ball. Maybe that's thumb placement or maybe that's finger spacing or something like that. Those three changes created this 10 inch increase to 13 inches of horizontal movement on trying and slider year over year. And as a result, the Woba against on the pitch nearly cut in half, one of the most effective sliders in baseball. Here's an example of what that orientation change looks like out of his hand from the batter's perspective. You'll see his fingers are oriented over the tracks of the ball and his release in 2021 whereas they're more on the inside of the horseshoe of the ball in 2020. And as I just showed, the ball itself is kind of rotated into that two seam on the tracks orientation. As I understand it, this sweeping slider or sweeper is a pitch that could kind of be trained with relative consistency by major league organizations. And as a result, some teams are targeting players who they think have underwhelming sliders, but the raw characteristics of a pitcher who could throw a better slider. And they're utilizing this kind of two seam orientation to induce that better movement. And a two-seam orientation on a slider can be beneficial because it could often create a little bit of that upward force through seam effects that causes the pitch to appear a little bit more lateral across the zone as opposed to dipping down into more of a curveball shape. And that's generally the shape that's most effective against right-handed hitters. That added and unexpected movement is the wacky stuff that I mentioned earlier, and it's caused by the orientation of the ball. As with many things in baseball and all of sports, there are a ton of variables going on at the same time that kind of complicates our ability to simply say X leads to Y. And I think that's a great example with this Trident slider, this new Trident slider. We know he jumped to a two-seam orientation. We know he probably changed his grip a little bit and how his fingers are spaced and thumb position and such, other things like that. But I, I think this is key on the seam orientation point because it's starting to help us understand how changing the orientation on sliders and breaking balls, curveballs, et cetera, specifically can help us to understand you know, how seam effects could actually influence these pitches more than we maybe previously have thought. It's just that we need more examples of things like this trying and orientation change and slider change to help us really get an understanding of how these orientation changes are maybe creating different seam effects, more seam effects to achieve desired movement profiles that teams are looking for to get major league hitters at. And I'm just hoping that come 2022, we have more examples of this for us to dig into.